Our topic this morning is iron sharpens iron, calling men out of isolation into vital friendships. It is about men and friendships. That's what we want to uh, discuss today. And uh, I was hoping Patrick would move this thing down here. I didn't really want to speak from here because I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I didn't want to look like I'm speaking to you. I want to speak with you. Um, tomorrow this pulpit will be there and that's when um, the speaker can speak to us. But today, I, I like the way my brother put, we are a men. I don't know when you put men together, that things they talk, that they never talk when other people are around. And so, uh, I want us to be free. Uh, if you like it, I'm not giving a sermon. I'm here to facilitate a, a, mini, a mini workshop, if you like it. And so in a, mini, in a workshop, the facilitator is not the one who speaks alone. So I'll, things I'll be asking, and I hope we will all answer. So to begin with, for those of us who saw the flyer, and those who have listened to the uh, topic of today, so what are your expectations? Why did you come? There is a saying, if you aim at nothing, you will hit, you will hit nothing. So what are you, what is your expectation? Can I see by a show of hand? What, yeah, my brother? Oh, to be sharpened, okay. A brother has come to be sharpened. Any, any other expectation? How to make good friends. So there are bad friends, okay. <laughs> Ah, to look for a sharpener. Okay, Tupa. Any other expectation? How I can apply whatever you teach us in my own life. Ah, yes, very good. Not just to be a hearer, but to be a doer of. So whatever I, ta I teach, even if it's the wrong things, you will apply. <laughs> <laughs> Any other expectation, please? Yes? To get some wisdom. I hope, I wish my hair was gray. Uh, but I hope, yeah? Yes. Where there is sharpening, there is transformation. Thank you. Transformation is a change that happens from deep inside us. Another expectation? Brother David. Ah, to bring the best out of you. Wow, wow, wow. Any other? That corner there? Okay. I think you have given me a reason to continue. If you didn't give me an expectation, I was certainly going to sit down because then, I mean, there is nothing to look forward to. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, if there are stories that we like hearing about, are stories to do with how men got their spouses. The interesting thing is that these stories are all unique. Uh, there are no two men here who got their spouses in the same way. So just allow me to give you mine because it has a bearing on the topic of today. I went to school in my home country of Higa up to all level. And after all level, the adventurer in me decided I have had enough of Western. I need to see other areas of this country. And so I choose a school in Central Province, in the current Moranga County, called Njiris. It was a very, uh, my generation knows, it was a very famous school those days. Where I did my A-levels? I was already a born again. Uh, I got born again in my O-levels. And so we went for a CU training, script by scripture union in a certain school. It was a girl's school, not very far. And in the process, I wanted to go to the washrooms. So I looked around. You know, when you are in a guy's school, you are very cautious. And uh, I just asked a certain lady uh, to show me. She showed me. And we finished, and I went back. But whenever we would have other challenge weekends, you know, we would greet one another. I finished, went to Nairobi. We communicated a little, and we lost touch with one another. And... Um, I joined the university, and in my third year, just before I left, 
a friend and a brother in the Christian Union in one of the fellowships came and said, hey, my brother, I, I had, we had gone for a, a, a mission in Meru, and there is a lady who said she knows you, and this is her address. Uh, those days there were no mobile phones. Um, uh, so I went back, and uh, since I knew her, I said, okay, uh, in my mind I said, this lady is definitely married. But I said, yeah, I'll write to find out, so how is she doing? So we, I communicated, and she didn't indicate anything. Uh, so I finished, I went to uh, my first job. When graduation was due, I said, okay, I think then for me to know her status, I will invite her for my graduation. I invited her, and she didn't come. I saw there was no way I would know what was happening. And earlier on, I'm one person who had decided that um, I, I will not engage myself in relationships because I'd seen how love relationships had messed many people. I said, I think I will study first. I can always get somebody. So even at the university, it's not, it didn't bother me at all. So I invited her to Sotik where I was working those days. And she came, and so we touched base after after five years almost, no, that was almost six years. And I discovered that she was still looking. So I chipped in my application and I held my breath for a two whole weeks because she didn't give me an answer. But eventually she said yes. To cut the long story short, Olive is the mother of our two children. And on 20th of this November, we will be celebrating 30 years of marriage. Amen. You can see how a friend changed my destiny. And when I was thinking about this, I was just imagining, suppose it's called Charles Mbui from Meru. Suppose Mbui lost that piece of paper that had an address, <laughs> or he decided not to give it to me. Or he decided, like some people used to do, they overturned the government. They said, now here, I think that... He didn't do that, and that's how I ended up marrying the lady that I now call my wife. I know in this fellowship there are many of us who have not only gotten things, not even spouses, but things, and we have made achievements through people who are not our relatives, but they just came our way. And that is the essence of friendship. Brothers, None of us here is self-contained. And God in, in, intentionally designed it so. If we were all self-contained, we wouldn't reach to one another. We wouldn't even come here. Why would we come here when we have everything? But God makes it so, so that we can create an avenue to reach out to a brother so that I can be a partaker of what is in him and him vice versa. And that's what I want us to uh, talk about the issue of friendship. And so, the objective is to understand, appreciate, and cultivate true friendship in our lives as Christian men. That is the objective of our talk today. I'll take us through a few areas. We'll look at the man's role in the family, where it all begins, a few perspectives of friendship, we also see what does the Bible say about friendship. And then we just look at a few aspects about friendship, the types of friendships, uh, how to cultivate uh, friendships, and some of the barriers that hinder us from actually cultivating these friendships. And we will finish with a challenge, a call to joining brotherhood. Allow me to do a small poll. Uh, amongst us, I don't think we are not 50. Okay, how many among us are below 20 here? Below. 20 years. Ah, okay, so we have one. We have one on first floor. How many of us are at 20 to 29? 20 to, oh, one, two. Okay, 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 okay. Let me take the, the census. Okay, so we have one and then two. How many of us are on the third floor? 30 to 39. Third floor. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them. Okay. How many of us are on fourth floor? 40 to 49. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And how many of us? My fellow legends, fifth, fifth floor and above. The legends? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, very good, very good. Six. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I'll, 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 the time to use those statistics will come. But allow me also to conduct a small test on friendship. Sorry. Fifth floor and above. Sorry. Fifth floor and above. So I meant fifth, fifth sixth, and seventh. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So seven. So the legends, we are a seven. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very nice. Yeah. So I want, I want to do a small test on friendship. You don't need a scientific calculator, so don't worry if you don't have one. Um, there are just seven questions. All you may need is a piece of paper and a pen or your phone, whatever you can write, very quickly. First question, when things go badly, to whom do you talk? Just write it down. When things go badly, to whom do you talk? Question number two. With whom can you be totally honest? With whom can you be totally honest? Question number three. When you fall, who will stand with you? Not if you fall. When you fall, who will stand with you? Question number four. With whom do you face life's struggles? With whom do you face life's struggles? Question number five. Who is your confidant? Who is your confidant? Question number six. Who holds you accountable? Who holds you accountable? And lastly, and very important, question number seven, and this one I want us to be very honest, and uh, I will ask for the answer for number seven. Number seven, and listen carefully, think of how many men, not your relatives, that you can call at 2 a.m. in the morning and they pick your call. Think of men, not your relatives, who you can call at 2 a.m. in the morning and you are confident they will pick your call. Just give me the number. Just give me the number. Just write the number. Right. I'm sure we have all finished. So keep the rest of the answers to yourself. But number seven, I want us to share. What, what figure did you get? Uh, just shoot your hand and tell me your figure. Just shoot your hand. Zero is allowed. Zero is also an answer. I said we'd be honest. Just shoot your hand, yes? Zero. Zero is being honest. It's being honest. My brother. One. David, you are raising your hand? Uh, you had one, but he went with the Lord. Okay. Okay, so zero, one, zero. Three. Three. Four. Two. One. 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 Two. Zero. My brother. One. Two. He had said his. One. Sorry. Not all. <laughs> so what is that answer? <laughs> it's zero, isn't it? It's almost. It depends how he slept the last night. Okay. Okay. One. One. Two. One. Okay. Uh, yes, Benjamin. One. Two. One. Zero. One. Three. If you get three, that is excellent. If you get three, that is excellent. 
So the rest of us who haven't reached there, we needed to, to think about it. We need to think about it. Chances are that we are isolated, lonely, and probably without hope. You can imagine the things that can happen at night. And if there is no one, we can actually be confident if we call the Olympic, then you can see where we are, right? You'll all agree with me that uh, we are living in tough times as men. Sorry, my brother Chesil. Okay. Okay. Yes, but I'm not sure whether all men were takuchekelea. The Bible talks of a friend who sticks closer than, than a brother. Uh, and you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing as we, as we move on. I was saying that as men we are living in tough times compared to our forefathers. I don't think they had challenges that we are currently dealing with. And if you are like me, it is possible that you are increasingly finding it difficult to juggle all your responsibilities as a man. A husband, a father, a friend, relative, a worker, a churchman, a neighbor, and a citizen. In short, as men, we are faced by many demands to an extent that is almost, it almost feels impossible to live out a biblical model of manhood. But the interesting thing is that our society revolves around men. I want you just to think. Our society, indeed, the entire world revolves around the male gender. It is not the female gender. Pastor Simon Mbevi, some of us may be knowing him, he is the founder of Transform Nations, and he runs a program called Men, Enough, Man, Men, Man Enough. In his book entitled Dad is Destiny, the difference a father makes, he summarizes the roles of a father in five Ps. The first P is presence, the second one is provision, the third one is protection, the fourth one is priest, and the last one is prophet. Presence, provision, protection, priest, and prophet. He continues to say, when fathers take up these roles, everyone is happy. When dad fails, many suffer. Sometimes back I came across a quote on fatherhood by Andy Stanley, who is an author and a minister, that really intrigued me. And this is what Andy says. Your biggest contribution to this world may not be something you do, but someone you raise. Your biggest contribution to this world may not be something you do, but someone you raise. And when I came across this quote, I couldn't help going back to my early days as I grew up. You know there is a saying that we appreciate the value of something when it is lost. I don't know whether you, you agree with us. It's not until something is no longer there that we appreciate what it means to us. I lost my father when I was 20 years old. I was actually doing my, my A-levels. It took me until I was employed when I had gone for a training and we were given an assignment, an exercise to do on who influenced you most. You know that this training you go and you, you are given some forms to fill and some, some of them you really think hard the way you have never thought. So I thought hard and I realized, oh, come on, I've never realized to what extent my father, who was a mere peasant farmer, he didn't even go to school, but I realized he had influenced me in two very significant ways. One, he loved and believed in me. And secondly, he disciplined me when I missed. Now, I don't know how many times your father disciplined you, 
But my father only beat me once in my life. That shows how much he loved me. But it also explains why that, that had to happen. He sent me to the market to buy something for him. And we used to cross a river. And that time, a cigarette was costing only 10 shillings. So I bought one cigarette, and I came and told him the change. One coin dropped in the water. So I came home. He was in the sitting room. And then I went, got fire, and lit the cigarette. And then went round the house and started puffing him. You know, he was a smoker. So he already sensed there is somebody smoking. So he came out and found me. And boy, I was whipped. I've never been whipped by my father like that. But that was the only time. I never gave him another opportunity to whip me. That was the only time he whipped me. Very interesting. He loved me, but disciplined me when it was necessary. And it challenges me. I don't know you are challenged as a father as to how you are bringing these children that God has blessed you with. Our generation is different. I have heard some people say, you know, I don't want my children to go through what I went through. It's possible some aspects. But do we love our children to an extent that we, we just assume, even when they do things that are not required? Those children you have, whatever the age, you have got no idea about what God intends to do with them. And God has given us the privilege to bring them up. And so our role is to nurture their curiosity, to inspire their creativity, and empower their dreams so that they can be what God intended them to be. If my father came back to life, uh, he has been down for probably about uh, 37 years, uh, he may not recognize this son that he beat one time when he was smoking. Perhaps he would be proud that I came out the way I am. And so, brethren, brothers, let's be intentional in our upbringing of our children. The father has a very big influence upon the children. And more so, the, the boy child oh, is a lot of influence. And you'd be surprised that all these times I'm talking about my father loving and uh, believing in me, he, he didn't speak anything. Uh, it's like it was it's just implied. Uh, our, our, the generation of our fathers didn't speak many things, especially to the young people. But just by you being there and the way you conduct yourself, you are influencing your children in a way that probably you may never imagine. And I tell people I'm very proud for having been brought up in the village because the values I developed then have brought me this far. John Paul II penned these words. As the family goes, so goes the nation, and so goes the whole world in which we live. There is no doubt that, brothers, we have a challenge in our society. And the family, which is the spiritual thermometer of a nation, is under attack. And the major challenge in our families is lack of proper leadership in the home. And as I told you, life revolves around us as men. And the more I think about this, I think of paraphrasing that quote by John Paul II by saying this, as the husband and the father goes, so goes the family, so goes the church, so goes the community, so goes the nation, and so goes the world in which we live. It always starts with you and me, the father, the parent, the father, the husband in that family. And so the state of the world as we talk, it's because of the way we have conducted ourselves as men. So the big question, my brothers, with all these challenges that we face as men, the big question is this. Can true friendship with the other men help us to bear these burdens? That's the question I'm asking. Can true friendship with the fellow men 
help us to bear these burdens that we face? The answer is an emphatic yes. Proverbs 27, 17, and as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Two or more people can relate closely and fail to influence one another. But research also reveals that the average man in the church has no or very few Christian friends with whom he can relate, share, and learn. Do you think this research would stand if they came to sit at Do you think this research would stand? Let's test it. Let's test it. I want you to make an observation between how men behave compared to women at the end of the service when we walk out there. Just tell me, what do you normally observe? The ladies will easily gather and begin talking together. Okay. Elder saying the ladies will gather and talk to each other. And what about the men? What do they do? <laughs> what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Why do they go direct to their vehicles or to the gate? Why? Right. How, how do you stay and there's nobody to talk to? Is it, is it because they have not met friends as they go to the car? Is it because they haven't met? So why are they going direct to the car? Because they have not established any relationship. How do you talk to someone you don't know? And that's what I want us to explore this morning. To understand, appreciate, and cultivate true friendship in our lives as Christian men. So let's go to the basics. How is friend defined? Uh, the dictionary defines a friend in three ways. One, a person with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically one exclusive of sexual or family relations. Yeah? Two, a person who has a strong liking for and a trust in another person. And thirdly, a person who you know well and who you like a lot, but who is usually not a member of your family. What do others say about friends? Six statements that I want you to tell me if they resonate with you. One, good friends are hard to find, harder to leave, and impossible to forget. Who can identify with that statement? Thank you. Good friends are hard to find, harder to live, and impossible to forget. Two, one friend can change your whole life. Anyone who agrees with that? Yes, and many of us are changed because of just one man and was not related to us. Three, good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they are there. Who agrees with that? When there is a crisis, they come. When you call them, who, who identifies with that? Thank you very much. Statement number four. No man is a failure who has friends. Yes, we can identify with that. Five, my best friend is the one who brings out the best in me. I think in the expectation there is somebody who talked about. One who brings the best. Many times we don't know what is within us. It takes somebody, even our giftings. We rarely know. It takes others actually to tell us this is the area that you are gifted. And number six, a friend is someone who knows all about you and still loves you. Who can identify with that? They don't love us because of what we do or we don't know. We don't do. They just love us as we are. Some 16 years, 1600 years ago, St. Augustine, a prominent Catholic church theologian said this, in this world, two things are essential, life and friendship. Both should be highly prized and we must not undervalue them. Life and friendship. These are nature's gifts. God created us that we might exist and live, and this is life. But if we are not to remain solitary, there must be friendship. If we will spend some time between here and the parking yard, like our ladies, then we must cultivate fellowship with our fellow men, and that will form an avenue for us to talk and discuss. Unfortunately, Studies are confirming what many of us already know by observation and experience. As men grow older, they typically lose close connection with male friends. When we are young, we have a lot of 
It's a gang, actually. We are very many. Uh, but those of us, fifth floor and above, we can count on our hand the people we can actually call our true friends. But should this really be the case? No. What does the Bible have to say about friendship? Two things very importantly. One, we are made or wired for friendship. And that's why Ecclesiastes 4.9 talks of two being better than one. Number two, we are made by our friendships. Proverbs 13.20, he that walk with the wise, he that walks with the wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And the verse we had seen earlier, as iron sharpens iron, so one sharpens, one person sharpens another. That is the message of the Bible. We are wired for friendships, and we are made by our friends. There is a saying, if I want to know your character, what do I need to do? I just look at your friends. Yeah, there is, we can't help it. We just get influenced by those people around us. In fact, modern medical and social research confirms that friendships result in increase in happiness and longevity. And there was a study that was done in the US 2015. For 3.5 million people over 35 years of age, and they found out that those who are lonely, isolated, or merely living by themselves are 26 to 32 percent more likely to die prematurely. We don't do a lot of research in this part of the world, but if it was to be done, I'm not, I would not be surprised if it is true that if one is lonely, isolated, chances are oh, that you will die prematurely. And that's why Paul, in Hebrews 10, 24, 25, exhausts us and let us consider how to stir one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What are the fruits of friendship? Fruit number one, we need godly friends for accountability. A real friend will tell you when you are going off track. They will be kind, patient, and non-judgmental because they want what is best for you. Is that not true? The Bible says, Proverbs 27, 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are a deceit. Fruit number two, we need friends for godly advice. Have your thoughts ever been muddled due to a troublesome situation and you couldn't see left from right? This happens. These are the times we need to seek godly counsel from friends who care. Fruit number three, godly friends help us through the dark seasons. And many of us here have been through a number. And if you haven't, uh, they are coming. I can assure you those ones are coming. There is a saying I hear people saying, the earth is hard. Indeed, the earth is hard. Life is hard. And we will have seasons in life which we need godly friendship to lean on. Benefit number four, godly friends make us better people. Spiritual friends make us better people. They guide us when we have gone off track. They help us to make godly choices. They teach us about ourselves and keep us focused on Christ, just as we saw iron sharpens iron. Good friends make us laugh, and the laughter the Bible tells us is good for the soul. Before I came to Eldoret, I thought I had a medal for laughter. I love laughing. Until I met a man, I don't think he's here, he's called Collins Kodada. Collins has an infectious laughter. And so, one time we had an opportunity to go and minister Kakamega Sitam, and I can tell you we laughed our way all the way to Kakamega and back. Do you have friends who make you laugh until tears come out? You know you can laugh until tears come out. There are people who laugh until they fall down on the ground. Because, do you have such friends? It is unlikely that our spouses can get us to that level. Where you just love. In fact, people wonder what's happening. They look at you. But you don't give a damn because something great has happened. 
I've given you a tip. If you want a dose of laughter, please move where Kodada is. I can tell you he'll infect you. He, he loves, he loves, he loves very, very much. Number six, we were not created to be alone. Brothers, even animals move together. Have you gone to the wild? Rarely do animals move alone. They move together. What about us human beings? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17, 17. Seven, encouragement goes both ways. We encourage each other when we are friends. A true spiritual friendship will find you both encouraging to each other. And lastly, a true friend brings you closer to God. Abram Cooper, a former Dutch theologian and statesman, said this, he is your friend that pushes you closer to God. Brothers, in the end, a true friend brings you closer to God. They know when to lift you up and when to gently discourage you from making a poor choice. Their honesty and loyalty will keep them close. Allow me to look at the four levels of friendships and perhaps it's a time for us to audit our friendship. At this time, I want us to audit. There are four levels of friendship. The first level is just friends. Just friends are a casual acquaintance. The people we just meet casually as we move around. Level two is rust friend. And this is someone you grew up with, but with whom you are not particularly close. close. Rust friends can drift in and out of each, other, each other's lives. You know, you are not always in touch. Level number three is trust friend. This is a sounding board, usually liked and trusted, but not emotionally invested. The last level is a must friend. This is a true confidant with whom you can share anything. I know men, we have secrets. There are things not many people know, but there are people we don't fear sharing because they have won our confidence, yeah? So I just want you to look at the friends that you have and take statistics. So how many are just at the just level? How many at our rust? How many at our trust? And how many can you? Now, the ones I asked in the question number seven are at that last level. The must friend. The one you can tell anything and they can also tell you anything. Brothers, there are key elements in male friendship, just three that I want to briefly talk about. For us to be effective, we must find our identity in Christ first. We cannot reach out to our friends and imagine that we'll develop closer fellowships before we have already developed a close relationship with Christ. And what does this mean? That there are things that we have gone through as men things that some, some of them are not very pleasant things. But we know God has forgiven us. He doesn't hold anything against us. Until we have settled that, we will be fearful to move closer to people. Because we will always fear, suppose they fear, suppose they discover the things that I did. Will they run away from me? So we must have cleared it with Christ that we don't care if I tell you what I've done in my life in the past. You will not run away. In any case, that was five years ago. God has forgiven me, and I am moving on. So it is very important to establish us. Number two, we must take the initiative. And I want to challenge all of us. Tomorrow, instead of walking to your car, just hover and move to somebody. Greet them, shake their hand, and start a discussion. Exchange numbers. And that's how friendships actually begin. Take the initiative. Many of us wait to be approached. We might wait forever. Take the initiative. Reach out. And I can tell you, Many will respond positively. Lastly, friendship requires sacrifice. Yeah? We must make room for friendship. We will need to sacrifice time, conveniences, money, and other resources. Yes, a time will come when we have to go for a copy of tea. It doesn't cost nothing. So we must be ready to sacrifice. But the beauty is the benefit that accrues from these friendships, these relationships, are far much bigger than probably that cup of coffee that we have with one another. So how do we cultivate? I think there was the expectation to this uh, effect. Now that we have explored 
why we need two male friends and considered key elements of friendship. Let's now take a look at what we can do about it. Number one, pursue different friendships and evaluate the potential. Spend time with the different people, yeah? And see which relationships actually have promise. Test the ability to be real and transparent with one another. And I always advise people, it's good to have three sets of friends. The first set is your peers, your age mates. People you are at the same level, the same floor. The second level of friends are people who are above us. They have lived, we are going through what they have gone through. They have got experiences that they can teach us. Because it's not always good to learn from experience by ourselves. We can learn from experiences of other people. And that's how we benefit. And then the third set are the people who are where we have already left. And these are the people we can mentor. These are the people can, that can challenge us. I mean, for most of us who are on fifth floor and above, we are not very fluent in things to do with the IT. But I can tell you the guy is on second and third floor, oh, it's like a cup of tea. And we can learn things to do with the technology from them. So if you want to be to benefit maximally from friends, don't just confine yourself to your peers. Have men who are older than you, elders. Have others who are younger that you are pulling. You can actually share with them the experiences you have made so that you can shorten their learning curves. Two, look for variety. Yeah, we can have friends uh, from church. We can have friends from professional angle, associations. You know, instead of looking for a perfect friend, look for a one those who are faithful, and even imperfect ones, yeah? For example, it is good to have a friend who can encourage you, but also one who excels at giving you a holy dose of truth. You know, not all of us can give some truth. There are things we see in others, but we fear to tell them. We'd rather go and tell someone so that they can tell them. But there are people who will face you on the face and say, hey, see, senior pastor, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I've observed. Can you prove me right or wrong? We need, we need that. Not just, you know, there are friends who just, you know, pamper us. They just tell us what you wanted to hear. We also need friends who will tell us, no, that is wrong. You can't do that. You can't do that. Do you know, you know how our Kenyan roads are? You know, when you are driving for a long distance, there are things you can do as a driver and you feel guilty as a Christian. You know, just as a moment. You need somebody to tell you, brother. Uh, sorry, it, it was unfortunate, but I don't think we need to react like that. You know, you need someone who will tell you, truth the way it is. Number three, diarize meetings. When we agree, we will meet. Can you put it somewhere? If you are like me, have you ever made an appointment after work? Then you go home. But as you go home, you don't settle. Something is running in your head. It's telling you you should be somewhere. But you don't know. You just feel I, sh I should be doing something. Only the following day for someone to call you and say, I waited. At Java, what happened? And then you remember, oh my, because we didn't diarize it. We didn't write it somewhere. We didn't put an alarm for that. So let's have them in the calendar. Take small steps forward. Small thoughtful actions can go a long way without overwhelming us. Things like birthday wishes, prayer requests, seasonal wishes. That's how we can start and grow our friendship. Fifth, meditate on Christ's friendship with you. Let's not just go into friendship with an expectation to gain. We didn't give anything to Christ to redeem us. In any case, the Bible tells us it is more blessed to give than to receive. So let's go in with that attitude of Christ, not just benefiting, but also to give. And I can tell you, when we follow God's design for friendship, our health, our marriage, and our relationship with God will certainly flourish. What stands in our way as men to make friendship? Can I hear? What do you think? I mean, we can see, if, in fact, I'm not telling you anything new. I'm just reminding you. So how come we are not doing it? How come we have got only one man we can call at 2 a.m.? Or none? How come? Is it because men are, in, are scarce around us? Insecure. Okay, insecurity. Uh -huh. Another reason? Can you expound? Uh, men don't want to be exposed. To be exposed. Okay. Fear of accountability. Any other reason why we... We are where we are. The male ego. The male ego. Yes, the male ego. Right. Another reason? Lack of trust. Yes, lack of trust. Any other? 
lack of empathy. Yes, from fellow men. Yeah, I remember you saying that you don't want to tell them because they'll say you're shauriyako, isn't it? You know, everyone for themselves and God for for us all. Yeah, some people have that kind of a thinking. Another reason: competition. Yes, <laughs> we don't speak it, but it's true. Men, when we meet, we size up each other. What kind of a car does this guy drive before we can relate with him? And we lose it. We forget God has blessed us differently. And we don't need to be the same. Just look at our heights. Are we all the same height? But does that stop us from being men? We are still men. Competition and comparison. There is, there is positive comparison where we can inspire each other. You know, we can encourage each other to do. But that competition where, incidentally, in this part of the world, people don't like relating with the people who are doing better than them. I don't know that you know that. But how will you be better without interacting with somebody who will tell you what has taken them to where they are? Okay. Any other barrier? Sorry? Fear. Yes. Casual? Yes, casual friendship. They just, it remains at the first level. It doesn't go beyond that. My brother, elder. The? Status. Yes. There are people who believe I only relate to the people who are at my, my level. Just my level. Yes, that can be a barrier. Any other? <laughs> okay. In fact, doesn't just stop at telling their wives. What, what are their wives likely to do? <laughs> They'll tell others. And eventually it will come back to you. How do you feel when things take that route and come back to you? We really feel bad. And many of us then decided to keep quiet. It is so interesting that you have said all the barriers that are listed here. So let me just read them for the sake. The competition and the comparison trap. The macho stereotype. A real man is rugged, individualistic, strongly independent, emotionally detached. Mm. Kangumu, kama manaume. You will die. You will die with the kangumu. Yeah. A man must be tough. Come on, there is a limit. We are human at the end of the day. Number three, fear of intimacy with the other men. We don't want to be so close because we don't know what this guy can do with what he discovers about him. And I can tell you, all of us have got dark paths. Yeah? We are a work in progress. God is working on us, on us in many things. But it's actually by being open that others can help us to deal with some of these challenges. So let's not fear intimacy. Let's not fear intimacy. For those of us who have got one or two, three people we can call at 2 a.m., if I was to ask you more about that friend, you know, that is a real friend. There is nothing they don't know. When you have got had it rough at home, there are the people that you call. And lastly, is the status quo. Why change things when they are working? Have you heard of that? Yeah, why change? I'm okay. But we forget that beyond this level we are, there is another level of blessings. Yeah, there is another level of blessing. <laughs> Let me conclude by saying this. Patrick Mole, an author of a a book on men, a very popular book, it's called Man in the Mirror, said this, no man fails on purpose and no man succeeds by accident. No man fails on purpose and no man succeeds by accident. The Christian man succeeds because he has other men caring enough to intentionally disciple him. So the question I want to ask each one of us here, who is currently discipling you as a man? My fellow men and brothers, let's be intentional about cultivating true friendships in our lives as Christian men. Allow me to echo some words here. They are attributed to Africans. The problem is when Africans said things, they didn't uh, indicate who said it. You know, we didn't record these things. So they have ended up saying, calling them African proverbs. So there is an African proverb here. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The Christian journey is not a sprint. It's not 100 meters. It is a marathon. And on a marathon, the more we are to encourage each other, 
the easier the journey becomes. Let's get ourselves in friendship. The second one is from a Jamaican artist, Dennis Brown. And this is what Dennis Brown said. No man is an island. No man stands alone. And by now we must have known that that is true. No man is an island and no man stands alone. It is my prayer that as men of Sitam, we will put reality to these words. That for us to go far, we need the company of other men. That we cannot make it alone. I mean, history bears witness. Nobody who worked alone achieved anything worth mentioning. But when we have other men around us, then the journey becomes easier. Allow me to conclude by just engaging us in an exercise, and then I'll hand over back to Patrick. This is a call to genuine brotherhood. Just two questions. Question number one, I want you to score one to ten. Question number one, how important are male friendships to my spiritual well-being and growth? I want you to personally ask yourself that question. How important are male friendships to my spiritual well-being and growth? You can score one to ten. Question number two, how satisfied am I with the present state of my friendships? How satisfied am I with the present state of my friendship? Bearing in mind what we shared, the rust, the just, the just, the rust, the trust, and the must levels. These are the instructions. After you have answered individually, I want you just to move in groups of three where you are seated. You don't need to go far. Then work out the average for each question. Work out the average for each question. I just wait, just wait, I finish with the instructions. Work out men of action, eh? Men of action. What, uh, work out the average for each question. And then, number three, and very importantly, I want you to write what you are going to do about it at a personal level and at a men fellowship level. If you can give me, if your group can give two points on each, I think that's what, what will really help us. So once again, I can repeat the questions. How important are male friendships to my spiritual well-being and growth? How satisfied am I with the present state of my friendships? Score is one to 10. And uh, when you finish, I'll call upon Patrick uh, to take the feedback from you. Just three of you, I mean, if you can't have three, is okay, but quickly, just, just do that. I'm giving you about five minutes. Okay. Uh, let us uh, appreciate better uh, our speaker and uh, brother engineer, Magomere, for opening our eyes. Um, and I think my task here is very, very small. My task is to take the uh, views from these various groups. I think we had a group here, and then there was another somewhere there, and uh, there was some other group somewhere here and here. And I think I want us to be very brief in giving those responses so we can invite uh, our elder uh, to uh, just uh, pray about that as we come to that uh, closure. And um, I wanted to say, um, I think the first two questions are pretty easy. It's giving scores. And the first question is uh, how important uh, uh, manly friendships to our spiritual uh, beings, isn't it? So maybe I'll get the first. Uh, all these ones can just give me the scores, isn't it? It was one, two, ten, isn't it? I don't know what group uh, this is, but let us have uh, from the group where I was participant of. Okay. This cause and action point, yeah, that will be better. This cause and action point, so that at least we can go uh, quickly. And we can circulate a microphone. So you can, when you finish, you just give it to rotate, so that we can build capacity. Just a spokesperson for every group. Maybe I'll give every group how many minutes? Uh, at most two minutes, because we have... Uh, if you're not ready, then you can give the mic to the next group. How satisfied? So 
so mm-hmm. yeah then the other one is what are you doing about uh, what are you doing to pull for your average to what you want to be or Wow. Thank you. Let us appreciate that group. Building capacity. You can now circulate the mic to the next uh, group that is available and ready. Oh, 10. Yeah, good. Uh huh. A number. Just give a number. On average. So you didn't score that one. Yes, you didn't score it, but this man thought that uh, we mean accidentally as men, most of us are like, are just at the just level. We say we don't trust even our male friends because we fear for our families. You know they might. Okay. <laughs> that group is really afraid of families, eh? <laughs> yes. So what are you doing about those uh, to pull from five to ten? We say we must calculate more intentional friendship. Wow. Thank you. Wow. So men have friends outside there, not inside here. Okay, next group. Thank you. Thank you. Let us appreciate that group uh, for those uh, responses. Okay, thank you. So in our group, the first question, we said uh, we are six. We are how important are their relationships in our, our spiritual well being? We give it a six. How satisfied we are, we are not very really satisfied, we give it actually a one. Wow. Then, That's uh, a very. <laughs> we are really down. Somebody, somebody was giving it a zero. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have it two plus two plus zero. We got one. <laughs> so then uh, we, we see that uh, the action is that uh, need to be intentional. We start to relate now. And, uh, we start by just greeting people around the church and uh, just mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. that. Even bad wishes and some uh, celebrations we call with some uh, friends. Then you also need to get committed to men's associations because you realize that men's meetings, these meetings, that's where relationships begin. Mm-hmm. Because you don't come for them. Mm-hmm. Then you're working hard to get a mass friend. The one that the uh, that is them and what a mass, the one mm-hmm. helps in times of uh, need. And finally choosing to begin to trust men. Whoa. Let us clarify group. I think that's a very honest group. Uh, we love those responses. The next group. We're going well. The next group, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, our group, our group we, we gave first question, how you model a male friendship. We put it to my Christian group. We gave it at seven. Uh, I think that's very important. The second one is how satisfied in my level of friendship. And we gave it three. And our action point is that one is intentional. Uh, trust others. Those are one of the interests of us. I mean, friendship. I'm friendships. And moving from just friends to a master friend. Wow. Thank you so much for those responses. Okay, the next group. And I'm sure we are taking down those notes because we want to be better. Somebody said we're coming here to become better. Question two, uh, how satisfied are you with the process of the 
Okay, next group. Wow, thank you for that response. Uh, uh, very good responses coming through. Uh, next group. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for uh, those cool responses. Um, any other group that is remaining? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Brother David, for that uh, wonderful response. Um, the last group.